You may be surprised, or heck, even I myself am surprised, but I'm still relatively new to the Fire Emblem franchise. I know, crazy right? I know many Persona and SMT fans are also Fire Emblem fans, and you would think that I'd be one of them because it has so many of the things I love in video games. Strategic and challenging gameplay, interesting and well-developed characters, stories that take inspiration from mythology and historical events, cheesy action and set pieces, ridiculous character designs, hilarious dialogue and anime waifus and husbandos. You can sign me up. I've been wanting to branch out into making content for other games, and seeing as how Fire Emblem Awakening recently celebrated its 10-year anniversary in Japan, for my second non-Megaton challenge run, I figured I'd revisit one of the more controversial games in the series, but also my and many others' first Fire Emblem game. As for what to do, well, I was originally planning to do it with just Robin, but in pretty much every mission, Krom is required to be deployed. This isn't the case with Robin, but there are a handful of missions where his or her deployment is required. So at that point, I figured, why not just do a duo challenge instead of a solo challenge, especially since Awakening allows you to pair up. The rules here are that I am only allowed to use either Krom or Robin to fight the enemies. They don't always need to be paired up, but if anyone else interacts with the enemies at all, I have to start over. Can you beat Fire Emblem Awakening with only Krom and Robin? But first, a word from our sponsor, and this is one I'm sure most of you have heard of, Raid Shadow Legends. Ever since its release in 2018, Raid Shadow Legends has become one of the most popular free-to-play MMOs for iOS, Android, and PC, with well over 50 million downloads and around 1 million players per day, and over 4.5 stars on both the App Store and Google Play Store. It features exciting and strategic gameplay with over 600 champions to collect from over a dozen factions, one of my favorite being the High Elves, an ancient civilization dating back thousands of years who also helped humanity to form its own civilizations. Their civilization has survived both a war with orcs and a civil war, but continues to thrive to this day. It's also home to one of the coolest champions, Royal Guard, who has an awesome ability that deals damage relative to the enemy's max HP. Every day, Raid is constantly being updated with new content, including new champions and character skins, like the highly requested Legendary Ultimate Death Knight and Madame Ceres with her very cool-looking new Blood Veil and Hellbirth skins. And right now, we're going through Forge Season Pass 3, which includes some very cool items, so be sure to get them while they're hot. There has never been a better time than now to get into Raid Shadow Legends, and if you either scan the QR code on screen or check out the link down below in the description, you will receive $30 worth of free bonuses, including an epic champion Vergus, along with 200,000 silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard. I want to give a big thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, and now, let's get back to the video. We start up the game, choose new game, and choose hard as the difficulty. I know in these videos I usually play on the highest difficulty, but truth be told, I actually did try to play on Lunatic, but I just could not get past the first chapter. No matter where I sent my units, I just was not able to get past the first area, even when I bent the rules and allowed Krom and Robin to pair up with Frederick and Lisa. Maybe there are some hardcore Fire Emblem veterans that can do this, but I am not one of them. So I'm just going to play on hard, which is basically standard difficulty for other Fire Emblem games. Now, as for choosing to play on casual or classic mode, it doesn't really matter because of this challenge, but I'm just going to go with classic anyway. But after that, it's time to make my avatar. Normally games where I can play as my own character, I play as the male, but because of how often Krom and Robin are going to be working together, I'm going to want to get their support to rank S. Unfortunately, same-gender romances weren't in Fire Emblem at this time, and since this is when two units decide to marry, I can't get there if I'm the male. So I instead choose the female. Say hello to Nyarla. <laughs> anyway, the game starts with us in some kind of dream sequence, where Robin and Krom are fighting Jafar. This battle is the tutorial, so it's pretty much impossible to fail, but it does end with me stabbing Krom in the stomach. We're then woken up by Krom and Lisa, who we've never actually met before outside of that dream sequence a second ago. We can't seem to remember anything aside from Krom's name and our own. Krom doesn't seem too bothered by the fact that a complete stranger knows his name and agrees to let me accompany him back to his kingdom. On the way there, we come across a village that just got raided by bandits, so we fight them as our first battle. Now, as you may or may not have expected, these first several battles are going to be the hardest, for two reasons. One, we won't be able to use Frederick. 
At this point in the game, Frederick is far stronger than any of the other characters. He is straight up immune to most attacks and more than capable of killing most enemies in one hit. He's basically an early game crutch, and you're supposed to send him into the hornet's nest while everyone else picks off the remaining enemies. The other reason is that you can't select which units you deploy either, so I have to have whatever units the game wants me to have on the battlefield at all times. If they interact with the enemies at all, then I failed the challenge, and I have to reset the game, so all I can do is just have them hide in the corners and hope the enemies don't notice them. This first area of the map is what gives me the most trouble. I have to be very careful about where I place Krom and Robin, because I can't place them in a place where all the enemies will gang up on them at once. But I also can't place them too far away, because if I do that, the enemies will go for Lisa and Frederick instead. I try approaching it like any normal battle, but that expectedly leads to the enemies ganging up on one of them, resulting in one of them dying. Most of my attempts are just ending with me stepping too far forward and dying to the enemy. The two axe guys aren't very strong, but there's also a mage in the back of the area who can attack from an extra square away. In most of these attempts, I get weakened by the axe guys, and then the mage shows up and either finishes Krom off, or attacks Frederick or Lisa, forcing me to restart. Well, I try and try again, and eventually I do figure out an effective strategy. For the first sword guy, I have Robin attack through the vegetable stand. Then, Krom goes around and finishes him off. Then, I use them to finish off the axe guy on the bottom with them next to each other. The mage attacks Krom but doesn't kill him. Then, the other axe guy attacks Krom but gets finished off. Then, for the mage, I weaken him with Robin and have Krom clutch the battle by finishing him off with a single hit. Unfortunately now, both Krom and Robin are pretty beat up, and while Krom does have a few vulneraries, it's not going to be enough to allow us to deal with the remaining enemies. But, thankfully, Lisa also has some vulneraries. I'm going to allow training with other units in this instance because technically it's a part of the inventory, but I haven't had a chance to access the inventory yet. So, I give some vulneraries to Robin, take a few turns to heal up, pair up, and then approach the enemies. But I do it so that I'm in range where only one of them can hit me. There are only three, and I'm able to make easy work of them, and because Krom has weapon advantage over the boss, he goes down easily too. Later that night, we're woken up by an invasion of zombies. Lisa gets attacked, but is saved by a very feminine looking dude who calls himself Mark. As for the mission, well, it's actually much easier than the first one. Not only because Krom and Robin are higher level, but also because the Risen are actually weaker than the bandits, and here, there are also forts we can hide in, which boost our defenses and heal us every turn. What I do here is pair Robin and Krom up, hide in the fort, and just wait for the enemies to come to us. Even with all the enemies ganging up on us at once, they can hardly do anything. Two new units also show up during the battle, Sully and Virion, so I just pair them up and send them to the back corner of the map next to Frederick and Lisa, and then the Risen don't go anywhere near them. We beat this mission on the first try. After that, we make it to the kingdom, meet the Exalt, get the revelation that Krom and Lisa are actually prince and princess of this kingdom, and get sent on our first mission against Plegia. We also get our first support conversation, where Robin and Krom reach C rank. With Robin and Krom being C rank, they're now shielding each other and attacking together much more often, and the enemies are also much easier to deal with in the third mission. The problem is that the game still isn't letting me manually select my units, and with all the units I currently have, it's not exactly easy keeping them out of the enemy's reach, especially here because not only is this map small, but I have enemies attacking from two sides. Once again, I have to be very careful about where I attack from because if any of my other allies get in the enemy's attack range, they will go for them, and I'll have to restart. It also doesn't help that I have a new unit join a few turns in. What I do here is I send Krom and Robin forward separately next to each other so that most of the enemies are drawn to them. I then very carefully place my other allies in the tiny spots that aren't in the enemy's line of fire. Robin does get low on health a few times, but thankfully I have some elixirs that I got from our new allies. And after a few turns, I'm able to finish off the remaining Risen in this area. I then take a few turns to heal up inside the forts, handle the next few Risen the same way I handled the bandits across the bridge, and easily finish off the commander. Once the mission is over, Krom and Robin rank up to level B. With this, Krom and Robin will be working together in almost every battle, and thankfully for the next mission, I can now manually select my units, so I now only need to worry about any units that join mid-battle. That does happen here with Sumia, but as long as I keep her near the start, the enemies won't bother her. 
You also may have noticed Kellum on the bottom of the map. Yeah, you can get him to join by talking to him, but I don't want that, so I'm just going to ignore him. And once I open the doors, I am able to make easy work of the enemies. The Heavy Knight does give us a tiny bit of trouble, but with the frequency we're attacking at thanks to our bond, he goes down in only a couple of turns, and it's the same deal for the Commander. After that mission, we also get our first side story. A small village is attacked by bandits, and you're joined by a farm boy named Donald. Now, Donald has the potential to be one of the most overpowered units in the game, provided he levels up at least once during this battle. That is not easy, but here the challenge isn't for him to level up, it's to keep the enemies off of him. The battle starts with you in this fenced-off area, with lots of enemies approaching from multiple sides. The only way I can prevent them from reaching Donal is by sending Crom and Robin in different directions and basically killing the enemies before they can get to him. Once you've taken care of the enemies in this area, it's pretty easy. There are a lot of enemies in this mission, but they're all very low level, and not at all a problem for Crom and Robin when they're working together. And after the battle, their support advances to rank A. We then head to Castle Ferox, where the Khans agree to form an alliance with our kingdom if we win their tournament. And our opponent is none other than the same blue-haired guy from earlier. Overall, this battle is pretty easy. The only enemy that really poses much of a threat is the armored guy, mainly because during the battle Robin's thunder breaks, but I get lucky and pick up another one off of one of the enemies, and I'm able to make quick work of both him and Marth. After we beat him, we're congratulated by Nick Fury, the West Con. He agrees to support the kingdom and gives us another unit that we won't be using. We go back home to inform Emirian, and she goes with us on a mission to free our friend who is being held hostage. I stop to do a challenge battle on the way, and during this battle, Crom and Robin reach S rank. And you know what that means. Listen. my back and a sword at my side together my love we shall build a peaceful world just you and me now in the next chapter we meet the mad king of plegia and his girlfriend and they demand we give them ulysses royal treasure the fire emblem unfortunately this doesn't work for them which means it's time for another battle this is probably the hardest mission in the game for this challenge, mainly because you have to worry about Marybelle and Rickon, who are surrounded by enemies, some of which are flying, meaning they can just straight up ignore the terrain. Even if this was a normal playthrough, it would still be difficult to keep them alive. Thankfully, with Crom and Robin being s rank, they're pretty much always working together when next to each other or paired up, but there's only so much ground they can cover at once. Basically, what I have to do here is send Crom and Robin up the hill to the second level as soon as the battle starts, while having Marybelle and Rickon pair up and hide at the bottom corner of the hill. Oh, and to make matters worse, new enemies are constantly spawning in from the forts. In most of my attempts, it always seems to go okay, but there's always that one enemy that's able to slip by and attack. There's even one part where I only prevent the enemy from reaching them by standing in the way. After dozens of attempts, I'm eventually able to hold them off, and once they stop spawning in, I am finally able to finish the battle. And after 18 turns, I win. After this, there is yet another side story. This time, I have to save a merchant from some bandits. Once again, this fight is pretty easy, and my reward for beating it is that Anna's shops start showing up. It's random when and where they pop up, but they usually have discounts and or rare items that you can't get from ordinary shops, like high-level weapons, second and master seals, and permanent stat-increasing items. Anyway, for the next battle, Crom and Marth get attacked, but Marth loses his mask, and it's actually revealed that he is a girl. Not sure why that disguise was necessary, and... <sighs> okay, can we just stop trying to avoid spoilers? We've all played Smash, we all know it's actually Lucina, but whatever. The castle is being attacked, and we need to protect the VIP. As long as you position your characters in the doorways, the enemies shouldn't be able to come anywhere near her. There's also a character that joins mid-battle, but I just have her stand next to the VIP away from the heat. For the early enemies, all you really need to do is stand in the doorway, picking them off one at a time, and this battle will go smoothly. Lucina also helps with the battle too, and because she's AI-controlled, her attacks don't count as breaking the rules. 
Pretty much all you need to do here is just stand near the entrance, pick off the enemies as they come to you, and during this battle, Robin reaches level 20. Once all the enemies are dead, the very familiar looking commander will come to you, and we beat him just as easily. The next chapter is another easy one that has us fighting off an ambush next to a canyon, and during it, Krom reaches level 20 as well. Amirian decides to head back to the castle and gives Krom the Fire Emblem. Once we get to Castle Ferox, to the surprise of nobody, we learn that Castle Yalistol has fallen, and Amirian is going to be publicly executed. So we have to head there to stop it, even though it's probably a trap. After the cutscene, a new Anna shot pops up, and she has both a Master Seal and a Second Seal. Now. What Master Seals and Second Seals do is they allow you to change classes. Second Seals let you change to a viable class of the same tier, while Master Seals let you advance to a higher tier class if you're high enough level. I use the Master Seal to promote Krom to Great Lord, and what's cool about Robin is that she can take on pretty much any class in the game. I decide to change her into a Dark Mage since I've mostly been using magic throughout the game, and they also have a surprisingly high defense stat. I say surprising because... just look at that outfit. But anyway, the next mission takes place in a desert, and during it, two new units show up. When I see them, I do get a bit worried, but keeping them out of enemy fire is actually pretty easy because of how the sand inhibits enemies' movements. Just to be safe though, I do keep Krom and Robin apart so that they can cover more ground. And once I get Gregor and Noe to the back of the map, I don't have anything to worry about. The next morning, it is time to save Emirian. Let's go. And now, it is time to attack. This is another battle that takes place in the desert, so movement is a bit difficult, but it's not anything we can't deal with. There's also an AI ally who I'm not gonna bother, and a really attractive looking dark mage on the enemy team. Now, this battle itself isn't anything too special, but I do have to do what is probably the most painful thing I've ever done in any of my videos. After that, I just pick off the remaining enemy forces, including the commander who goes down extremely easily. But that doesn't mean we've succeeded. We get a choice of whether or not we want to sacrifice Emirian, but it doesn't really matter because the outcome is the same. After that, there's not much we can do. Basilio lets us know that he secured an escape, so we go and we get what is probably my favorite mission in the game. The atmosphere, the rain, the map, the music, and especially the dialogue all really make this chapter great. I love how the enemy soldiers begin to question what they're doing, and considering that an important character just died and we're all probably exhausted from battle and desperately trying to escape, this really makes for one of the most immersive chapters in the series. At least, that's the case from a contextual standpoint. From a gameplay standpoint, this chapter is extremely easy. Midway through the battle, some of the enemies start retreating, and the ones that don't are all pretty easy. I pretty much just have Robin and Krom paired up, with Robin taking the lead, and the enemies are all going up to her and getting destroyed in the process. At the top center of the map, I camp out in a fort, let the enemies come to me, and once I feel I've dealt with enough of them, I go for the commander and finish him off. We make it back home where things aren't looking good, but it turns out that Amirian's sacrifice has made her a hero, and the Plagian soldiers are deserting en masse. Seems like a good opportunity to lead a counter invasion, and that's exactly what we do. Now, while the enemies for this chapter aren't difficult, what is difficult is the fact that new enemies are constantly spawning in, and Olivia is also a mandatory unit for this chapter. 
You'd think that as long as I keep her hidden away in the corner, it'd be fine, but there are just too many enemies spawning in, and they're bound to make it to her at some point. For an army that's losing soldiers en masse, there sure is no shortage of them here. But anyway, it does take me a couple of tries, but eventually I figure out that once I take out the king, his reinforcements will stop spawning in. My Once he's down, it's only a matter of time before I finish off the remaining forces and put an end to the war. The enemy surrenders, and Krom takes the throne. Fast forward two years, and Krom and I get married, and together we have a kid, Lucina. Yeah, I think you already know what the deal is here. But anyway, we're summoned at Castle Ferox, where Virian tells us about some guy named Walhart who's been going around conquering every nation he sets footed, and he wants our help to stop him, so we agree. Now, you may have noticed that in that last battle against the Mad King, Robin reached level 20 as a Dark Mage, so I decide to use a Master Seal on her. I have a choice to make her into either a Sorcerer or a Dark Knight. Now, some people would argue that a Sorcerer is the ideal choice because of their access to Dark Magic, but the Dark Knight has better defense, a movement of 8, and access to swords, so I decide to become a Dark Knight instead. I also do another optional side story where I save a different Anna from some bandits, and this one decides to join our party. But anyway, for the next story mission, we have to secure a harbor from Valmy's forces. There are a lot of enemies here, and they're slightly tougher than the Plagians, but still not a problem at all. They're doing a little bit of damage to Krom, but they literally cannot put a scratch on Robin. She either dodges or completely nulls the enemy's attacks and finishes them off very easily. I almost feel bad for these enemies. I mean, they just don't stand a chance. I finish off the commander, and after that, it's not long before I finish off the remaining forces. Once the battle is over, it becomes apparent that we won't be able to fight off an attack from the sea. So we go to Plegia to ask for help, and their new king is that same wizard guy we beat the crap out of earlier. Surprisingly, he agrees to help and gives us a whole bunch of ships. He also introduces us to someone who not only looks like me, but also has the exact same name. Wow, what a funny coincidence. But that's not the end of it. Validar also seems to be a big fan of Star Wars. No, I... Father. Man, I wonder where this is gonna go. Well, let's not think about it until we've dealt with that Walhart guy. After that, we're just randomly attacked by Risen, and we have to do what is probably the easiest chapter so far. The only thing I need to worry about is Henry, who is a mandatory unit who I have to keep out of the enemy's line of fire. This chapter takes place in a canyon with enemies on both sides, while the commander stands on a bridge in the back. All I need to do to win is kill the commander, so what I do is I charge forward with Robin and snipe the commander on the bridge, and this battle is over in just two turns. After that, there's an assassination attempt on Krom from a Risen, but Lucina jumps in again and saves him, and then gives us the not-so-shocking revelation that she's Krom's daughter who went back in time to save him, because without him, the fell dragon, Grima, gets resurrected and... yeah, things aren't too good. Big surprise there, but anyway, after this cutscene is when you start getting bonus chapters for the children of all the units you've had marry. Aside from Lucina, the only one I'm going to be getting is Morgan. Morgan is Robin's child, and they'll always be the opposite gender of whatever you are. Now, for this chapter, Morgan is in some kind of weird ice castle, and he's being attacked by a bunch of Risen. Now, at the start of the battle, he's AI-controlled, so his attacks don't break the rules. I decide to leave him alone for this reason, but in my first attempt, he foolishly charges at the enemies and dies. I know that saving him isn't a requirement, and for this challenge, it's pretty pointless, but you know what? He's my son, and I'm not gonna let my son die, even if he's actually just a few lines of code in a video game. So what I do is I get to him as fast as I can so that I can fight off the enemies near him. Once I talk to him, he becomes controllable, so from this point, I can't let him make contact with the enemies. It sounds easy on paper, but this is another one of those maps where the enemies are not only spawning in from the staircases, but some of them are flying, and protecting him from them isn't that easy. Eventually, I figure out that the best way to do this is to hide him in the back of the map and wait for the enemies to come, while also having someone stand on the staircase. As long as someone is on top of the staircase, the enemies can't spawn in from it. Even so, it's still pretty difficult due to the sheer amount of enemies combined with their ability to fly. It does take a few attempts, but eventually I am able to get them taken care of. Take out the commander, and I reunite with my son. Huh? 
I also get some support convos with him, which is kind of pointless here, but still cool. So for the next chapter, Robin comes up with the plan to rig some of our ships with oil and use them to bomb the enemy fleet. But first, we have to kill the general of their lead ship. This chapter is not hard at all. All you need to do is defeat the commander, which thankfully is easy because this map is tiny. But I do stick around and defeat a few enemies for the experience. Once I beat the commander, we execute the plan and set their fleet on fire. We then go to the harbor where, once again, we have more enemy troops to defeat. In the corner of the map, there's a woman surrounded by soldiers who we can save, but it doesn't really seem to matter whether she gets defeated or not. Once again, this map isn't that big, and there are a lot of enemies here, but they're all hopelessly easy. There are also some houses in the back that we can visit for some decent loot. Once we've got all that, we make quick work of the commander and end the battle. Well, turns out that the woman we helped is one of the resistance leaders, and she tells us about the dragon that she and her people worship, known today as Tiki, which of course means that the next mission will involve saving her. We go to this giant tree where of course the enemy forces are waiting, but they're no trouble at all. We are starting to see some new enemies here, and they are a little tougher than before, and another thing about this stage is how narrow the pathways are, but it's still a very easy chapter because all we have to do is beat General Monopoly Man. <laughs> We get to Tiki, she tells us about the Fire Emblem and how the five gemstones were used to defeat Grima, but were scattered, and we need to collect them all if we want to beat him. She gives us hers, meaning we only need two more, but even the gemstones aren't going to solve the Walhart problem. This next part of the game has us fighting in a series of battles against Walhart's best generals. Now, I could sit here and lazily explain it with my boring monotone voice, or I could just show you how it all went through a montage.
And that is it for the war against Walhart, but as you'd probably expect, that's not the end of the game. Valadar invites us to his castle, and of course it's a trap, which means we gotta fight him. I think you all know the drill by now. Just pair Krom and Robin up, and go through and destroy everything in your path. These enemies are a bit more powerful than the Valmese, and Robin's defenses aren't as high due to her being reclassed as a Dark Flyer, but as long as she's with Krom, the enemies don't do anywhere near enough damage to kill her. During the fight, Robin learns Gale Force, which is the main reason I reclassed her to a Dark Flyer. What this does is it lets her move again if she kills an enemy once per turn, which in this case pretty much means she gets two attacks. The enemies here put up no challenge at all, and with the help of this skill, I am able to finish off the commander very easily. Unfortunately, before we find the way out, Valadar uses his influence to make Robin give him the Fire Emblem, complete with all five gemstones. That is not good, and in the cutscene afterward, Lucina reveals that Robin is the one who killed Krom, and because of that, she has to kill us. Although, one thing that is interesting about this cutscene is that normally she'll actually try to kill Robin, however, if Robin is her mother, which is the case here, she doesn't actually go through with it. Just something I thought was a cool touch. This game may not have that great a story, but it does have some great characters. Anyway, I don't really have any more reason to keep Robin as a Dark Flyer, so I use a second seal to reclass her to a Grandmaster, which is the upgraded form of the Tactician class. I was a little tempted to change her back to a Dark Knight, but I think it's more fitting that I end the game with her as a Grandmaster. Now, going back to the story, as we expected, Valadar is trying to summon Grima, and most of the townspeople don't seem to have too much of a problem with it, so it's up to us to stop it while we can. For the next chapter, I send Krom and Robin off on their own, but the enemies for this chapter are much more powerful than I was expecting, and after being surrounded, Robin actually does die to them. I suppose I should have expected that since it is the last stretch of the game, but talk about a jump in difficulty. So for my next attempt, I have them pair up, and now they're doing much better. I'm having Robin do most of the attacking due to her magic attack range, and unfortunately the good weapons I'm getting at this point of the game, while powerful, don't have the best durability, but at least I'm constantly picking up new ones for both Krom and Robin. As long as these two are together, the enemies can barely put a scratch on them thanks to their boosted defense and evasion rates. And once I decide that I picked up enough loot off of the dead enemies, I make my way to Aversa and make quick work of her. Once we get into the castle, you may notice that it looks strikingly similar to the area in the tutorial. This map is also divided by a barrier. What's supposed to happen is that only Krom and Robin can face Valadar, while everyone else is on the other side fighting his minions. There aren't any other enemies besides Valadar here, so once again I pair them up, move over to Valadar, and defeat him in one try. That was easy. Too easy. Just like in the dream, Valadar uses some weird magic, fails, and then Robin stabs Krom with her magic laser blade thingy. Things look like they're going in Valadar's favor, but then Nick Fury shows up. Turns out that he not only faked death, but the gemstones he handed Valadar were fake, and Krom is alive because Robin weakened her magic just before attacking. What this means is that the battle is still going on, and now the barrier has been removed. Valadar is now hiding in the back corner of the map around all his minions, but just like in the last chapter, we can make easy work of them. Basilio and Flavia also join, but the enemies are too busy dying to Krom and Robin to worry about them. Valadar, on the other hand, has much more HP than he initially did, but that doesn't stop Krom from finishing him off in just one hit. Now, even though Valadar is dead, the battle still isn't over. 
This is another one of those battles where we have to defeat every enemy, not just the commander. And did I mention that enemies are still spawning in from the stairways? Yeah. The real challenge of this level isn't having the strength to defeat the enemies, it's having the ammo. Thankfully, despite there being a whole lot of enemies here, I do make use of what I have and take down all the enemies, ending the chapter. But the game still is not over. That person that just coincidentally happened to look just like Robin and share her name actually is Robin from the future. The evil Robin in the old timeline who followed Lucina back in time and is here to summon the fell dragon Grima. Things do look bleak, but we still have the fire emblem, meaning it's not too late to stop him. But first, we have to consult the help of Naga, the divine dragon. This next battle has us fighting a whole bunch of Risen in an open field. Once again, there are a lot of enemies here, and this map is much bigger than the last one. Almost all the enemies here are either riding dragons or horses, and we have to beat them all before we can move on. While Robin and Krom are still very powerful, these enemies should not be underestimated, because not only do they have high movement, they also have a lot of health. The best strategy here is to just keep Krom and Robin paired up, hide in a fort, and wait for the enemies to come to you. This battle lasts over 20 minutes, but with a lot of patience, we are able to take down the enemies and win the battle. Once we're done, we make it to the temple, and using the emblem, we summon the divine dragon, Naga. She upgrades Krom's sword and tells us we need to use it to land the final blow. There is one more battle before fighting Grima. This one takes place in a mountainous area, and the commander here is a Versa again. The enemies here aren't as strong as the ones in the last mission, and thanks to Robin's Gale Force skill, I'm able to advance much faster. The mountains do make things a bit difficult, but thankfully we only need to beat a Versa to finish the mission. After a few turns, we do make it to her, and I think you know what happens. So we get close enough to Grima, and Naga tells us that she can get us on top of Grima's back. This is the final battle, so if you have any last minute preparations to make, now is a good time. So, we get on Grima's back, but as soon as the battle starts, some spikes pop up from the floor and get both of us down to 1 HP. Yeah, it doesn't look like this is going to be possible, but we're able to keep going thanks to the power of friendship. Fight back! <laughs> what? Come on! Now. And now, we can do this extremely easy final boss battle. Once again, you only need to beat the commander. Based on the formation the enemies start in, you can probably figure out how this is going to turn out. The first turn, I move up closer to the boss. Then, a few of the enemies try to attack me with no success. Then, the next turn, I attack one of the heavy knights guarding the boss, and thanks to Gale Force, I get to move again. You can probably already guess where this is going. I move through the gap, and attack Grima. She uses an extremely powerful looking attack, and it doesn't even hit. After that, yeah. Right. 
Now here you're given a choice. You can either have Crom finish her off and temporarily get rid of Grima, or you can attack her with Robin, which will permanently seal her away, but also result in Robin's death. Now, whichever choice you make doesn't actually affect the ending too much, and it's never shown what actually happens. I suppose there might have been plans for a sequel, or they just wanted to leave it up to your imagination, but whatever the case, I choose to have Crom do it. The dragon goes down, we're congratulated by our units, and we get our final cutscene with Krom, and then the credits roll. Here, we are shown all the chapters throughout the entire game, and which characters perform the best out of them all. Which, of course, is Robin and Krom for all of them. And after that, we see all of our characters' battle statistics. Krom has 458 battles and 268 victories, while Robin has 677 battles and 574 victories. And then there's everyone else, all of whom have zero battles and zero victories. And you also get to see what the characters did after the events of the game, which is pretty cool. But there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. It is more than possible to beat Fire Emblem Awakening on hard mode with only Krom and Robin. And I'll be honest, this challenge was extremely easy. Robin is commonly considered one of, if not the best unit in the game, and Krom is a pretty good unit too. The biggest challenges of this run were getting past the first few missions, mainly because those missions were designed with the intention of having Frederick carry you through them, and it was also pretty difficult to keep my allies away from the enemies. That being said, I still had a lot of fun, and I'm glad I got to revisit this game. I know Awakening does have its problems, especially with its story, but as someone who started with Awakening and got it mainly for the fact that it came out around the same time SMT Cross Fire Emblem was announced, it'll always hold a special place in my heart. The gameplay is still fun, if a little unbalanced, and the characters are great. If you guys have any ideas for challenges of Fire Emblem games, be sure to let me know in the comments, because I do want to make more videos on this series in the future if you guys want to see them. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you want to help me out financially, consider leaving a Ko-Fi donation of just $3. Until the next video, I will see you all later.